Hey there, Falcon fans. I wanted to tour you through some of the types of compression that you can find in Falcon. Uh, each one gives you slightly different uh, opportunities to uh, change your sound. Really great for sound design. You can also use it for some types of mixing or sweetening of audio that you already have in the can, especially with the use of something like the sample oscillator. I'm going to show you uh, these different types of compression using different instruments so you can get a feel for what each one does. You're not going to get a recipe here for compression because how you apply compression really is up to you and it is going to be dependent on what kind of sound that you want. Do you want a very squashed sound? Do you want a very open sound? All these things are uh, they're up to you to play with and I encourage you to experiment with the different kinds of compression that you'll find in Falcon. So to start with, I have a very simple drum loop here, and what you're going to see is that my note tracking is at 0%, so uh, there is no difference in the sample no matter what note I play on the keyboard. I've also turned off the velocity amount and the velocity sensitivity. Now, the reason I did that is so that no matter what I do during this demo, uh, you are going to hear only the effects uh, that are different as a cause of using compression. You're not going to hear anything that's different because I pressed a key harder or softer. So here's that uh, loop without any compression applied. All right, great. So pretty simple. You can hear that those drums, they've got a bit of room in them. They are not uh, extremely dry. They're not samples. Those are real drums being sampled in a real room. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use uh, the Opal compressor, uh, which is a model of the very famous LA-2A compressor, uh, which has a limited number of knobs, but UVI have added a bunch of different features here to the compressor to give you even more control of the sound. Now, I'm not going to go over all of these different uh, controls. They are well documented in the UVI Falcon handbook, but I'm going to give you an idea for how things sound. So again, I'm going to play the drums uh, by holding down a key for the sample. I'm going to turn the compressor on and off so you can get a feeling for what it does to the sound. Now, I'm going to give you a cautionary note here, which is you're going to want to listen to this on very good high fidelity uh, headphones, uh, such as the ones you use for studio mixing uh, or a good studio monitor setup. That's going to make it easier for you to hear uh, what I'm doing here. If you're listening on a phone, even a good phone like a brand new iPhone, uh, you're not going to hear uh, the subtlety of this as well. With that, let's go ahead and play, and I'm going to turn the uh, effect on and off. All right, there it goes. Now, what I want you to listen to is I want you to listen to how the room changes and what happens to the decay of the sound as I turn the compressor on. off especially on that kick drum and that hat listen for the room sound all right just gives you a much fuller bigger sound um, there are a lot of different models uh, of la2a that are uh, that are included here this is just the default the lax swift but each of these uh, LA-2As is going to give you slightly different response, and so you can try them on different instruments and different patches to get just exactly the sound that you want, the exact kind of attack, the exact kind of clamp down on the sound, and the exact kind of release that you like. And that, in addition to all of these other controls, uh, gives you a lot of control over the kind of compression that you want. All right, so this type of compression, we're going to look at the feedback compressor. Again, this comes uh, stock with Falcon. Let me, uh, again, I have pitch tracking and uh, key velocity turned off for this demonstration so that you only hear the sample uh, at its original amplitude without any modulation by me. <laughs> All right, there's our, uh, that is a cool little rhythm guitar sample uh, that you can hear. And I'm, we are actually using the compressor now. So I'm going to open this up so you can see what's happening. And I'm going to turn the compressor off so you can hear how this patch sounds without the compression. Now, 
Now, especially useful is the input and output meters here, where you can see the sound coming in and how it's being altered going out. As I turn this on, at the peaks I'm compressing quite a bit. Now with the compressor off, what you find is the sound uh, with the compressor off is varying quite a bit in volume. In other words, the quiet parts are likely to get lost in a busy mix. On the other hand, if I turn the compressor on, you're going to see that the output volume doesn't vary as widely. It's still very dynamic and chunky, but there's a less of a difference in the volume of the louder parts of the riff and the quieter parts of the riff. And so that means that when you dial in a volume, you're not going to have to dial it up too high uh, for it to be heard, uh, and you don't have to risk the lower parts, the the uh, those little chickity chicks in the guitar. You don't have to worry about them being lost in the mixes easily. All right, this type of compressor is great because you can very carefully set a threshold. You have the ability to set a ratio, unlike the Opal compressor. Uh, you uh, also have a knee, which is uh, allows you to determine uh, how quickly the compressor kicks in. Is it going to kick in with no knee immediately uh, at the uh, at the joint where the threshold is passed, or will it slowly set in as you approach that threshold? Um, that's a very useful uh, function for making things sound organic uh, and real and making your compressor not stick out quite so much. And of course, there's a makeup gain so that you can uh, adjust the, the volume. I've adjusted this makeup gain. I found that 50% works great and gives me about the same amount of loudness uh, for the input and the output when I turn it on and off. So I know that what I'm hearing is an accurate representation of what I'm going to get in my uh, sound mix and my sound design. All right, for this example, I've got a different compressor selected. This is the compressor expander that's built into Falcon. Now, I have a very simple uh, keys arpeggiating patch here. It is set so that velocity uh, is not sensitive at all on this patch. So no matter how hard I hit the key, you're going to hear the same volume on this arpeggiation. All right, great. Let's, um, and just so that you can see what's happening here, I've got a delay that's set up, but let's say that I wanted to accentuate them a bit in a mix. I'm going to close this down so it's a little easier to see what we're doing. And uh, you'll notice I've got a compressor expander here. I'm going to play this patch and I'm going to adjust the compression so that you are going to end up hearing more of those delays as part of the sound than you did previously. The way I'm going to do this, I'm going to choose a, a compressor ratio um, I'm going to say about 5 to 1. 10 to 1 seems a little heavy-handed, and I'm going to play this riff, and I'm going to start playing with the threshold and the other, uh, and the other uh, uh, controls here. Now I'm going to turn on and off the compressor. So the louds definitely got quieter, and I would rather make up a little of that game. With the compressor engaged, you find that the uh, delays jump out a lot more. All right, so again, this is pretty subtle, but what you can hear is that by adjusting the gain, what I've done is I've controlled the loudest parts of the patch, that is the initial hits on the arpeggiator. I'm compressing those quite a bit, and then by applying some makeup gain, I'm making the whole patch louder, which brings the delays out a bit more, and it makes the whole thing kind of vibe and move uh, a little bit more strongly. There are all sorts of other controls they can use here. This is actually a combination compressor uh, and gate and expander. And so there are plenty of controls here that have nothing to do with compression, uh, like the gating, but you'll find your compression basically along the top here. 
You have a threshold, a ratio, an attack, and a release, quite like the feedback compressor. You'll find a makeup gain, and rather than that being uh, through a, a mix determination, uh, this is done uh, in decibels. I do, uh, I do would like to caution people that the auto makeup uh, control here can be very finicky. If you use it, uh, things become very, very loud uh, all of a sudden. So be careful using that button. I usually like to stick with the makeup gain and use that instead. Now I'm going to show you one other type of compression. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this compressor off. We're going to open up our menu and we're going to apply a three band compressor. The three band compressor uh, allows you to apply different kinds of compression uh, just with simple controls. And you can do that across three different areas of frequency. And you can choose how much to a uh, compression to mix into each of the parts of your sound. So I could choose one level of compression for the bass, different for the mids, and different for the highs. And if I want, I can even uh, choose to have 0% mix for any of these bands. So if I only want to compress my highs, then I can simply apply compression there, and I can turn the mix to zero for the other bands. Uh, let me play around with this a bit. What I'm going to do is I'll just try and see if I can bring out the uh, the lows and highs here a bit. So we're going to adjust this downward so that we're only going to apply this to under 220 hertz. I'm going to solo this. Notice I can really jack the gain up if I want. Here's without. And with. All right, let's go to the highs and we're going to turn those up as well. All right, not appreciably louder, but you can see the sustain is really holding on with the highs. All right, now we're here in the whole mix. Here's without, and here's with. One cool thing that we can do here also is that Falcon has a built-in parallel mixing capability. So I can choose how much of this mix that I want to apply to the entire uh, patch. So if I turn this down to zero, you're going to hear none of the compressor even though it's on. And I can choose how much to bring in. Here's without and with. Again, very subtle. This is why, you know, I advised you want to have good headphones or speakers to listen to this. But uh, these are just some of the ways that you can use compression in Falcon to bring out aspects of your sound uh, that you really enjoy or that you want to emphasize uh, in your sound design. So I hope this gives you ideas that you can apply to your next session with Falcon, which I think is just one of the most amazing sound design tools known to man, and there's virtually nothing that it can't do. I hope you have fun with Falcon, and I'll see you next time.